Welcome to the Chrissy B Show and tonight's show is all about crazy ways to lose weight. Now many of us at some point have tried to lose weight very quickly. There's the crazy starvation diets, the mad workouts at the gym, you know those really bad diet pills and other unsafe things. So on my show tonight we'll be dispelling any myths about losing weight and being healthy and I have two experts to share their secrets to successful weight loss and good health. Now I've done quite a few things to lose weight in the past which I'll be sharing later on but first of all my guests are fitness trainer Jane Rafter and founder of JCW Fitness and also nutritional consultant and chef Christine Bailey. Now if you want to tweet and email us about the kind of silly things that maybe you've done in the past to try to lose weight and be healthy you can email chris at chrissybshow.tv or you can tweet Chrissy B Show. If you want, you can also give us a call 020-7686-6300. So do stay tuned for this whole show because we're gonna be doing lots of stuff that's gonna be really educational for you. So first let's introduce the first guest and that is Jane Rafter. We've seen twice before now. Yes, that's Good right. Evening. Thanks for having me back. Oh, it's lovely to have you here. And actually I'll tell you a little secret, Jane's gonna be actually joining us on a regular basis for which I'm really, really pleased about because I have, so she's my favorite expert on, on fitness to have on the show. Thank you I'm very so much. So am I. So thank you okay. very much for having me. It's so remember what we're going to speak about tonight. I've gone blank. Um, <laughs> crazy ways. Yes, crazy, <laughs> crazy, crazy ways, ways to <laughs> lose weight. Yeah. Um, I had actually, we, we, had a couple, we found a couple of things that we'll maybe start off with just to, to show our viewers. Yeah. Now, um, we did a bit of research and we found a few, there was quite a few things actually, but there's one, four in particular that we picked out that were really crazy, weren't they? Yeah. So the, the first one is... Uh, a vinyl sauna suit and now it's a two-piece heavy-duty suit made of vinyl that's designed to retain body there's a nice picture of it looks really trendy doesn't it imagine people were have you seen people in the gym wearing that well? i personally have never never really seen it, i would feel really I've, embarrassed I've to wear that in the gym it, i've never seen it <laughs> now apparently it's the, the people say it's an effective sweat age which uses natural body heat generated from any type of low or intensive high energy physical exercise to increase perspiration during your workout and it helps with the dehydration process. Isn't that dangerous, Jane, <laughs> to well, get dehydrated in the first Normally, place. we would associate dehydration with something negative. You wouldn't want yeah. to become actually dehydrated. Yeah. So to have it as an objective, to me, seems crazy. <laughs> so I don't think we should be aiming for dehydration at all. Yeah. And the thing with this type of thing, and I guess also things like hot yoga, there's a thing called Bikram yoga where you um, go into a room that's 104 degrees Fahrenheit and 60% humidity. What, to exercise? To, to do a yoga class. I think I'd pass out if I tried that. I think, you know, there's, there's a, a higher chance that you would <laughs> and, you know, you might feel unwell. Yeah. And the whole idea of these things is that they make you sweat um, profusely. So if you step on the scales before you work out and after, yes, it might have gone down by a pound, but what you've lost is body fluid because you are dehydrated. So nothing to do with fat. You're not losing mm. body fat. So if you sweat, you're not going to lose body fat. Okay. It's, it's not going to happen. It's not true, unfortunately. So, or else we'll be stuck in the sauna all day, won't we? Yeah. Yes. I mean, <laughs> if, if getting hot in itself and sweating was good for fat loss we'd all lose weight lying on the beach yes. wouldn't we if you think about it yeah. like that it, that would be true but it's not unfortunately right. if it was that easy it'd be great but okay let's not. go to the second one this one this one's ridiculous this is the i can't even pronounce it it's, it's a diet soap supposedly anyway so it's, it's a unique weight loss soap that the merchant says is made from the elixirs of undersea plants including rare seaweed now the merchant goes on to say that the unique qualities are its defeating agents which penetrate to the sub, how do you say this word, James? Sub subcutaneous, subcutaneous, subcutaneous layer subcutaneous. to assist in the elimination of fat layers. 
So apparently, you just kind of rub your skin with this soap and it's supposed to burn. That is so stupid. But people like... I, I, I know that because I know I can understand because people there's people that are really desperate to lose weight so. and to get healthy and it's like they are willing to try anything and, and obviously people the marketers make it sound so I believable. Think so. I think so and it. I think you know to be totally honest I think they they are cynically manipulating people's yeah. extreme desires to want to lose weight and people who think well I've tried everything else I'll try it it won't do me any harm but actually if you think logically. How can rubbing a soap into your skin burn away fat? It cannot be scientifically possible. And if it was, it would make the nine o'clock news. Yes, yeah, true. It would be national headlines. They found yeah. a soap that is scientifically proven, proven to help you lose weight. It, it's unfortunately, again, I mean, yeah. it's tempting, but my advice would be don't, don't purchase anything mm. like that. Steer clear of those gimmicky <laughs> things. We have two more that we're going to go through quickly before we get onto the gym stuff, because I can't okay. wait to hear about that. Caffeine tights <laughs> apparently help trim <laughs> inches from thighs, reduces the appearance of cellulite and reduces the dreaded orange pill effect. So you, apparently you just wear these, they, 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 they are, these pair of tights and you get toned up. <laughs> doesn't work no I would say again that isn't going to work and you know cellulite can be really frustrating and women are more prone to it than men mm. and there are different views about what can cause it but the most common opinions are that it's not enough exercise um, too much body fat being stored in your body mm -hmm. and perhaps some th uh, hormone influences as well. So it's a combination of all those things and caffeine isn't going to have an, an effect on how and where you store body fat on your body. It okay. isn't. It just isn't. Not, okay. not at all. And this one, this one's really silly. <coughs> Apparently there's this, um, what do you call it? Like a balm, a lip balm that you put on that supposedly when you put it on your lips, it's, it uh, curbs the hunger pang. So you're supposed to look, basically lick yourself skinny. Yeah. Doesn't work. But you were saying something interesting to me in the green room, weren't yeah. you, about the psych psychologics behind yes. it? Yes. I, I just I had an opinion about this that if, you know, so if someone tries to give up smoking, they have to do something with their fingers. Mm -hmm. So they'll find themselves fidgeting with something instead of smoking a cigarette. And I think that the way that might work is that um, somebody who's normally putting things in their mouth all the time gets the lip gloss and puts that on their lips instead. Yeah. Then it's providing a psychological distraction um, rather than actually the lip gloss mm. helping them lose weight. And yeah. I think actually, you know, if that works, if putting lip gloss on stops you eating another <laughs> sausage roll, then then use it. But you know, you, you could can, have you can use anyone. You right? could have you don't a have tub to buy of Vaseline <laughs> yes, in your shoot. pocket and stick that on. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. So I don't think. I mean, I don't know how much that costs, but I suspect yeah. it's not cheap. And probably I would not. imagine that anyone who says it's worked, that's probably why. Because mm -hmm. they've got something to do instead of eating, something positive and yeah. a good distraction. That's, and and that's you'll have nice say. luscious lips at the end of the Yeah, day. you would. You wouldn't get chapped lips in winter. <laughs> exactly. So that's another bonus. <laughs> right. So Jane, let's talk about the gym now. Because yeah. obviously this is your, your expertise in the, the gym and training yeah. and stuff. Um, so what other common mistakes people make in the gym? Because they, they, you know, you've got people that are desperate to tone, tone up and lose weight. Yes. What are the most common things that that people do wrong when they go to the gym? Okay, um, it might sound obvious, but there are two main ways that people go wrong, two fatal errors if you like, and that is not working hard enough or working too hard. So if I could just cover both those things, yeah. I know it sounds obvious, but those are the things that happen. So very often when you get someone who's new to exercise, they go crazy. So they go mm. to the gym or they go to classes or they go running or they do whatever they're gonna do and they are actually doing things that could be potentially dangerous. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example. I know of um, a client of mine whose husband, when they went on holiday, um, he hadn't been doing any fitness for a long time. He, he thought, right, I'm gonna run. So he got his trainers on and he sprinted up a hill mm -hmm. and he spent the next two or three days in bed. <laughs> Literally, he couldn't yeah. get out of bed because he hurt his knees and he oh, hurt his bless. back. So. You know, if, you, if you're going to go into a new program, you need mm. to have a sensible, realistic, balanced approach to it. And there are certain things that you, I'll show you in a minute, that you, yeah. to make things safe. 
um, there are simple ways that you can try and make sure that what you're doing is safe. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you're new, if you're starting, if you're starting back after a long time, get some advice um, from a, a professional. In the gym, they'll show you around the programs. If you go into classes, chat to the teacher. Mm -hmm. And if you're going, if you want to go running, start with power walking and build it up slowly. I think also it's worth considering having a, a medical check with your GP. Um, mm. You see that on all the videos, don't you, on all the fitness videos, check with your GP before you start. But actually, that is good advice because you might have really high blood pressure that you don't know about. Yeah. You, you don't have symptoms. And if you launch yourself into a really high energy aerobic workout can be quite dangerous. You're yeah, more likely so always to have check, always check with your, your doctor. I first. would, I would. If, you know, if you've not had a medical check for a long time, if you live a sedentary lifestyle, if you know you, you, you're not fit. Um, mm -hmm. And actually, some people have high blood pressure even when they are fit. Yeah. So it's just worth knowing. Um, so that, that might be something to consider. Okay. So take a balanced approach, be sensible and be safe. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is that some people end up going to the gym or going to classes and sort of just cruising through. So it's more of like a social thing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, you might say to your friends, well, I go to the gym three times a week, you know, and then, oh, and then your friend will go, really? You don't like any different? <laughs> and it might be, it's you know. a good friend. <laughs> yeah, tell you the truth. It's a good friend, she'll tell yeah. you the truth. You don't like any different. Yeah. You're not getting results. So if you're not getting results, you're probably not working hard enough. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you're on a bike in the gym and you're looking around and chatting, hi, <laughs> Julie, yeah, did you see X Factor? It was great. <laughs> you know, or you're reading a book, um, you're probably not working hard enough. So right. you need to put some real effort into your workouts if you want to lose weight. So mm. if you're on a bike, you should be, your breathing should be... <sighs> You know, yeah. I'm going to get to the end of this. Yeah. So if you're not like that, if you're just chatting <laughs> and looking round, working hard it's enough, not, it's not going to work. So you need okay. to work hard enough to get the results, but not so hard that you're going to injure yourself or put yourself off. Okay. Can you share some questions um, as well? So yeah. So people are safe when they're actually training. Yeah. So there's a couple of things to bear in mind. Um, working with weights, as you know yourself, because you've yeah. worked with weights, haven't you, uh -huh, to lose yeah. weight. Mm -hmm. It's very beneficial for weight loss. Um, but you do see in the gyms really poor posture. So I'm going into poor posture now. If I stand sideways, mm -hmm. you can probably see. Yeah. So I'm going to let my tummy relax, which means I've switched off my core. Mm -hmm. My hips are pushing forward and my knees are what we call locked. Locked knees means completely straight. Uh -huh. I don't know if you can see my knees. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. see my knees. So if I start to lift weights now like this, say I've got two weights in my hands. If I start going like that, I am in real danger of straining my back. Uh -huh. I'm going to strain my back and this like this. So if you're working with weights, it's really important that you soften at the knees, mm -hmm. pull in your tummy so you've switched on the whole of your core section, slight tuck underneath, and then this stays still and you isolate the movement. Does that work the abs as well? As yes. Because of that posture? Yes, because you're, you're working on your core strength as well, mm -hmm. but you're protecting the back here. Right. So working with the weights, whatever you're doing, free weights and actually on a machine as well. It's still important on a machine, but it's even more important if you're working with free weights. Yeah. And the, the other thing to think about is the amount of impact you do. So mm -hmm. if you're doing anything that involves jumping or jogging, you should have soft knees and a soft landing. If you jump and land heavily on your foot with a locked out knee perhaps, or just really heavy, the impact shoots up into your back Ooh, and it can really yeah. hurt your back. So you've got to think about it. If you're running on a machine or on the pavement, imagine that you're trying to make no sound and make it really soft. Oh, right, so okay. the impacts of the whole body Whoops. right up. <laughs> oh no, that's something I've done wrong there. <laughs> I sound <laughs> like an elephant on a treadmill. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people do and, and, and the impact's jarring up the body. And yeah. of course you need good shoes as well if you're mm. going into impact work. But bearing in mind that power walking with good technique is just as good for fat burning as a slow jog. Is it? Yep. Yeah, because I really don't rate. like jogging. I can't just get a Exactly. Stitch. So if you, if, oh. I mean, again, you shouldn't be able to be on Check. the phone and chat. If you were doing a power walk, you should still be mm. 
talking like I'm power walking. Yeah, okay. I'm power walking. So you still get your heart rate up significantly. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, so it, you don't necessarily have to go into high impact. Okay. But those are things that will keep you safe. If you bear those things in mind, the posture and the way you do impact is really important. Okay. And how about, is, what's, what's better to do? Is it better, because sometimes people's timetables change quite a lot. Yeah. So is it better to do like, um, maybe like train one week, three or four times a week and then not do anything for a week and then do that again? Or is it better to, to kind of try and do at least a couple of times a week? What would you suggest? I think um, consistency is the important thing. So it's better to get yourself into a, a, a regular pattern of exercise mm -hmm. where um, it's something that you can put in your diary and you can stick to. I mean, government guidelines say that you should do 30 minutes five mm -hmm. times a week. And that can include uh, walking yeah. or something like swimming. It doesn't have to be structured exercise. But, you know, what the government is saying is, look, it's more important that you do a little bit every day. That is mm -hmm. important. So try and spread it out. But try not to do three a week, then nothing for a week. It's better to do one a week really? than yeah. to do three a week, then nothing for two weeks. It's better to have that consistency in terms of your fitness. Okay. Yeah. All right. Jane, you're going to stay with us because we're going to go yes. to a quick break. And then we're also going to be joined by Christine Bailey, who's a nutritional expert and chef. And she's going to be sharing some really valuable tips with us as well. And also we'll be hearing from our viewers. So it's not too late for you to email Chris at chrissybshow.tv to tell us the craziest things that you've done to lose some weight or to try to get healthy. So join us after this break. Welcome back to the Chrissy B Show, where we're speaking about crazy things people do to lose weight. And now, as you know, we're approaching the holiday season and loads of people are desperate to lose weight <laughs> fast and for the ladies to get into that little black dress for the Christmas party. But please don't do anything crazy. And we're here to speak about this with Christine Bailey, nutritional expert and chef. Hello, Chrissy. It's lovely so to be back. Coming. Hello, it's Yeah, great. it's lovely. I was, just, I was just telling Christine earlier, I, I'm still thinking about that <laughs> gorgeous fudge she made. I bought all the ingredients. Aww. I'm going to make it. It's Good. all in my cupboard, so I'm going to do it Good. very soon. And it is on your website, and it's on my website, yeah. I think, as well, so everyone can have a look, yeah. Okay, so we're going to speak a bit about fad diets, first yes. of all, because, I mean, I have done some, some crazy mm. thing. I mean, I've taken diet pills in the past because I was quite desperate. They made me feel very unwell, like, mm. sort of, it my heart do. was beating very fast, mm. so I stopped those. And I remember this particular diet I did, and it was the whole family, my parents and my sister and myself. And it involved, for example, for one day you eat just chicken and nothing else. Mm -hmm. The second day, just a load of fruit. Mm. Third day, steak. I spent most of my day in bed because mm. I felt so sick and dizzy and yeah, headache. And this this is a awful. temptation, isn't it? Because like you say, we've got, what, seven weeks before Christmas, if that. Mm. And so people do get into that almost panic mode of, yeah. oh my goodness, the party season is on me. What am I going to do? And so they're not thinking about nutrition in any sense. They're just thinking, mm. seriously, I just want to step on those scales and see them lighter, or I want to get into that dress. And that's why um, there are some of these very, very weird fatty diets, <laughs> which certainly aren't looking about nourishment, which is yeah. obviously as a nutritionist, which is what I'm looking at. They're looking about quick fixes, aren't mm. they? That's why something's making you feel unwell and sick. Mm. That's a big sign that you're, not, you're doing something mm. wrong, mm. right? Mm. And That's some good. of these actually longer term, which I know we're going to talk about, yeah. can actually do some quite potential damage to the body as well. So it's not just they don't work. Mm. It's actually longer term they could actually do some damage. Okay, let's let's go through yes. um, a couple of them. We've yes, got the got couple, let me just find you? it. The, right, let me get the pronunciation. Acai berry. Acai, yes. Acai berry. Yeah. Of that. You might say acai, but we're saying acai. That's the proper <laughs> way to say it. There you go. Yeah, and you can now, see what is the wrong with this, there. What's wrong with this diet? So there's nothing wrong with this berry. Now this berry, just for people that um, may not be aware, it's an Amazonian and um, Brazilian and um, very very high antioxidant berry. Mm -hmm. So from that perspective, actually, it's very very beneficial having the berry. Although equally you could say that it's quite expensive compared to getting a tub of blueberries from Tesco's, for example, or other supermarkets. <laughs> um, 
But the trouble is that this has now been marketed as a weight loss tactic. Mm -hmm. And what they've done is they've put it into juices, they've put it into smoothies, they've even put it into supplements. And some of these also have added ingredients such as guana and caffeine and so on. Um, with the thought that actually that could help you lose weight. Now, I'm sorry, but an antioxidant rich berry is healthy, mm -hmm. but it will not in itself help you lose weight. And um, what you are buying into is a fad that could actually be quite expensive. And some of these are often contaminated, these supplements, um, mm -hmm. and certainly don't help you lose weight on mm -hmm. their own. It's right. also not helping you to develop any long term health healthy eating techniques at all. Mm -hmm. So please, I mean, in a way, they're often marketed as tablets that you buy and they will suddenly melt your fat away. I'm okay. sorry, they That's will it. not do that. It's a load know? of rubbish. It is, and <laughs> they're very expensive as yeah. well, you know. Yeah. Um, and it, it's not teaching anyone healthy eating. Yeah. It's not teaching them, actually, from day to day, what do I need to do for long-term sustained mm. weight loss? And yeah. that's the problem as well. So, Jane, we should go and buy some blueberries and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, so much healthier. Lot of money. <laughs> and probably taste a lot nicer yeah. than just swallowing a tablet, exactly. which is a lot of what these are doing. All right, let's, let's so see the next one. one. Baby food. Yes. Now, we've, we've got the likes of um, mm. Lady Gaga, Gwyneth Paltrow and Jennifer Aniston, to, Aniston sorry, who are reportedly fans of this diet. Mm. So you just eat a load of baby food. I so, what is that? I mean, come on. So the idea <laughs> behind this diet um, and the reason why it may work is because, of course, it's portion control and calorie restricted. It's so the, the Absolutely. <laughs> so the idea is that you eat about 14 jars of baby food a day and you space it out and uh, you'll lose weight. Well, of course you'll lose weight because each jar probably has about 100 calories each. That's roughly what they have. So you're already automatically going down to about 1,000, 1,400 calories. Mm -hmm. Well, calorie restriction, you will lose weight. It doesn't mean it's healthy. It doesn't mean that it's optimal nourishment for a grown lady. Yeah. Um, a lot of these are also quite low in fibre. So one of the side effects is that a lot of these people end up very constipated oh, and end up eating um, or taking a laxative. Um, so then you've got problems with bowel health um, mm. and ongoing problems with constipation and sometimes flatulence as well, which is not very pleasant. Um, but again, what is it teaching you? Is celebrities it... going around farting everywhere. Well, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> very elegant. Not necessarily very sociable either. Exactly. But again, what is it teaching you? It's not teaching you healthy eating um, techniques at all. Um, you know, this is a tactic that a lot of people use if they cannot control their own portion sizes, mm. of, obviously, because they know they've only got only be allowed mm. to eat one or two jars. Yeah. Um, I don't think that's particularly pleasant. Can you imagine going to a restaurant and saying, excuse me, I'm just going to get out my <laughs> baby, baby food, food jars because that's what I'm going to eat tonight. But Jane, mm. well, if people are on something like this, would they lose fat necessarily or is it something else they'll be losing? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess in the short term, you probably would lose some body fat because mm. if you're on any calorie restricted diet, the immediate consequences are that you lose body fat but it's not a healthy way mm. to lose body fat it's not good for your health and, and you put it on as well don't you quickly afterwards you put it on more quickly afterwards and don't forget that you also lose muscle density mm. as well you lose everything in your body that you need um, you're not getting the nutrients that you should get from a balanced diet you probably wouldn't have as much energy as you would have if you were eating a, do you agree, Christine, as if you were eating yeah, a healthy and diet? And actually, one of the things about the baby food diet is because of the food manufacturing le regulations about baby food, um, they have to be quite limited in the vitamins and minerals, and particularly mm. iron, because if you overdose on iron as a, as a small child, that could actually be quite dangerous. But of course, as a grown we woman a who's menstruating, actually, yeah, we, we know more. that even teenage girls, about 20% of teenage girls are anemic. They are low in iron. That's a government survey. Mm -hmm. And so um, a lot of women are also low in iron. And if you start subsisting on baby food, that yeah. isn't actually going to give you, like you say, mm. sufficient protein for a grown woman who needs a lot more than a small um, child mm -hmm. and also nutrients such as iron and, and zinc and so on and we're moving into the winter period zinc actually is very important for the immunity um, as is vitamin c um, but also we need sufficient protein because protein is the basis of our immunoglobulins for immune health mm -hmm. so you know we do need that and again a lot of women will step on the scales just as jane said look at what the weight says but not actually think hmm 
where does that weight come from? Is it water? Mm. Is it muscle? Which it could be, or is it really fat? They're just elated. Mm. They don't care that the yeah. scale's gone down. Yeah. yeah, and that's another yeah. problem because if you're obsessed with weight, as we know, you could step on the scales one day, mm -hmm. two days later, you might actually be a couple of pounds heavier just because you've had a, a lot to drink the day before, you've had a large meal, um, and so they're permanently on and off, on and off the scales. That's not sustained weight loss, mm -hmm. and it's certainly not aiding sustained healthy eating approaches either. I think that's yeah. crucial as well mm. because I think it, if you're on these diets and you lose weight, what are you going to do? Live on it for the rest of your exactly. life? But at some point, You've you got have to, learn. to go back and learn, don't Absolutely. you, how to eat yeah. healthily. Mm. And for some women in, and men, I guess, who find that difficult, it's easier for them to have no food. I mean, if you're a mm. heroin addict, God forbid that any of us would ever be, but you, it, there is potential for you to stop. You can't stop eating. Mm. And if you're addicted to food, it's quite hard mm. then, I think, to find that balance. Mm, so some right, people yeah. find it easier to, to eat baby food or mm. berries because they're not dealing with the real issue. And yeah. I know that might sound, I hope it doesn't sound patronising, but I think that, that that's a factor mm. in these diets, yeah. that people opt out of that. Yeah, really. and I think also we're coming to the Christmas season and that's when we have the blowout. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't learnt how to yourself restrict and look at what makes a healthy meal, and we can talk about actually how do you balance your meal, you then go to a party and that's it, it's a free from Pig all. Pig out. <laughs> you do, because you haven't learned, because you, you've got no yeah. restriction, because you haven't got your baby jar foods there yes. to, to say, well, that's all I need that. to yeah. eat. You yeah. know, it's that's like, right. well, hey, this is party time. <laughs> and then you can go over the top. Let, let's exactly. take a couple of emails from our viewers about crazy things they've done to lose weight. Amelia, what did they say? Um, we've got a comment here from Jen. She says, the craziest diets I've ever done was when I took, when I only ate 600 cows a day. I almost died. It wasn't very nice. It worked very fast, but I put on the weight just as quick. Mm -hmm. We've got another one from Flavia Bracellos. She comments, I have never done anything crazy and I have never used any medicines. I would say that the craziest thing I have ever done was to try and do a soup diet that I'd almost lost it almost lasts for, for a month. But after having that soup for three days, I couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> I'm <I'm surprised>. surprised. <laughs> we, ha we have another one from Jujula, very funny. I attempted a strictly ve um, vegetarian diet. I was two weeks into it and I became a complete nightmare to live with. I had a constant mood swings and I was, wa and I was a walking stink bomb, an emotional <laughs> roller coaster. I did lose weight, but I could not continue with it. Okay. I think that's quite important because everything that you've just said, I could not keep up with it. Yeah. I could not sustain it, mm. you know. And um, while it may be tempting to try and get into that little black dress, long term, what's going to happen in January after the party season? Are you just going to go back to your normal the eating habits? tent instead. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Hide behind all those jumpers. <laughs> you know, it's not really teaching healthy eating habits. And Jane and I have both got children, you know, and one of the things we want to do is make sure that we're encouraging and um, healthy messages mm. to children as well. That they don't want to see us eating bars at, um, jars of baby food. You know, what mm, message sure. is that giving? That's mm, not sure. helpful. I would not be happy bunny to eat well, uh, such small no. portions as I can't. I get very ratty if I don't mm. eat enough. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's go to the, to the next one, the maple syrup diet. Oh, this is, yeah. So this is like, celebrities mm. like Beyonce have been known to try this liquid and laxative diet to drop pounds quickly. Mm. So it involves um, doing this fast 14 days involving a diet of fresh lemon juice, maple syrup, cane and water, mm. plus a laxative in the morning yeah. and at night. Yeah. Ooh, so now this awful. one, probably out of the, all the ones you've mentioned, this one I have most concerns about because actually it could cause some long-term problems with the liver. The idea is it is a short-term fix, so we're not saying that they would be going on this for a long time. But even so, what you're effectively giving your body here is sugared water. That's what you're giving your body. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also very high in fructose because maple syrup actually is a very high source of fructose. Now, fructose, um, without getting too chemical, is metabolized by the liver. And what this means is that the burden of breaking this compound down is with the liver. And this can raise triglycerides and it can raise cholesterol. And it mm -hmm. can actually cause things like fatty liver. So not mm -hmm. only could it either not work or not teach healthy habits, it could actually be putting a lot of burden on mm. the liver and long term raising your triglycerides, which is a heart disease risk factor. Gosh. 
And so also, people don't realize how, no, what, what they're doing to absolutely. Yeah. But the other thing it will do is because you're shoving yourself with loads of sugar, it causes the pancreas to release lots of insulin, and eventually your body will become what's called insulin resistant, not mm. respond to insulin. That's on the surge to metabolic syndrome and diabetes. Mm -hmm. So there are longer term consequences of this diet. Um, and like you say, where's the protein? Yeah. We need protein for muscle mass. There's no protein there at all. Mm. The reason they have to take a laxative is because they'll get so constipated. Again, that's not good for bowel health either. Mm. So um, you're likely to be losing a lot of water, not necessarily losing um, fat, and probably wasting and losing muscle. Is that where you get that, that thing called um, skinny fat? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I see that because when I see clients, we often will do what's called a body composition measurement. So we're not just sticking them on the scales. We actually look internally, how much fat have you got? How much muscle have you got? Because for me, that's much more important. That's a sign of healthy aging. If you're mm. retaining muscle and you're um, getting your fat to a healthy level, and that's not necessarily too thin or too, too much. Um, but what you often see is women that look thin, but actually internally, they the have got quite a lot of internal yeah. fat but not very much muscle, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll feel weak, they'll feel drained, they'll feel low in energy, they won't be able to sustain um, an exercise programme, for example. I was going to say, I yeah. those women don't exercise. Ab they'll be absolutely shattered. That's why shattered. Their muscles <laughs> are wasting or, away. or if they do, yeah. they'll be absolutely drained they'll within half exhausted. an hour. Just, they haven't got the um, energy. Just a question yeah. about the exercise as well. Now, um, people might say, because they are exercising loads now, that they can yeah. eat whatever they want as well, what would you say to them? <laughs> I think that's a common mistake mm. and some people who go to the gym a lot even subconsciously eat more and then they can't understand I've got one client actually that I've had a lot of chats about about this with and you know if you think about it when if you if you're on a, a running machine or a bike working really hard you burn 100 calories in about 10 minutes roughly speaking mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're fit, your metabolic rate tends to be higher after you've worked out. And if you work mm. your muscles, you've got higher metabolic rate. But really, if you start overeating over and above what would be a healthy amount to eat, then you won't actually lose fat. And I think a common mistake that people make is that they, they don't eat enough protein. Mm. I mean, even women who don't exercise as a rule mm. don't eat enough Very protein, low. do they? So if you're exercising, you need lots. And mm. if you were to see someone like Christine, you'd probably be shocked at how much mm. protein you really mm. should eat. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. You know, not just a mm. tiny little spoonful yeah. of tuna. Mm. Have a whole tin of tuna with your lunch, you know. But that's a very good point, because what you've just said is what happens when you eat carbohydrates and sugar? It raises insulin. Now, mm. insulin, what it will do is stop fat burning. And what you mm. often find is that someone that's just done a workout at the gym then downs a sugary drink and they'll stop fat burning. That's so, so they think, absolutely, it's wow. the wrong mm. thing to do. You know, you'd be better off eating protein. a slice of chicken or something yeah. because it's the protein. <laughs> because chicken. what you don't want to be doing is raising that insulin. That will stop your fat burning. And things like fructose and fructose, which is hidden a lot in sugary drinks, will do another thing. It will lower what's called leptin. Now, leptin is a hormone that actually controls our appetite. And if you lower that, well, you can eat more. <laughs> absolutely. It will then increase another hormone called mm. ghrelin, which mm. will stimulate your appetite as well. So fructose can actually have quite an adverse effect yeah. on feeling ravenous or feeling satiated. Mm. Okay. Muscle mass needs protein needs and protein will satiate yeah. you. And you need okay. to rebuild the muscle after mm. you've worked it. Mm. And you know, big, dense, strong muscles are calorie hungry. Yes. So they eat more calories. Mm. You know, so a lot of women don't realize that, you know, work on your muscles, build mm. your muscle strength. I don't mean in size, just the strength just, and yeah. density of your muscles. I'm going to be doing that with you next hungry. week, aren't I, Jane? Yes, I'm coming are. to You're one coming of your classes. classes. We're going to do some filming at one of Jane's classes. So class. then so don't have a sugary drink forward. afterwards. I'll have water, I'll have water. <laughs> and then we'll have protein Jane. when we go home. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to say hi to everyone at JCW? I would love yeah, to, please. Yes, I would just love to say hello, everyone. All my class members at JCW Fitness. Um, I hope you're watching. You all said you were, so yeah. <laughs> thank you. And um, I'll see you all at class soon. Okay, so thank we're going to go to a quick break. Jane, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very Christine, much. Christine, you're going to be yes, with us we'll after the staying. break as well, and we're going to be talking about lots more interesting stuff, so stay tuned.
Welcome back to the show and I've still got Christine with me and we're going to be speaking about more about nutrition and whether stuff's healthy yeah, or not. And foods. Yeah. Yay. But before we get to it, we just had a, another question from a viewer that you know, I promised I would ask you. Yeah. Now, this is from Juan Malta and he's asking, would you please recommend a good source either on the web or elsewhere mm. where we can build a customised nutrition and exercise mm. plan? Well, there mm-hmm. are actually some really good apps out there, which and a lot of them are free, you know, like mm. um, Diet Tracker and so on. And what you can do is actually put in what you eat and your exercise as well so there are on the website some Mm -hmm. good apps that you can use um, which again are free so things like diet tracker and there's fitness pal that's quite a good one one. that's a very good one i mean there's some information on my website as well Mm -hmm. um, that we can sort of link up with Um, but yeah there's some really good easy to use nothing complicated apps that you can get for free yeah i hope that helped you juan Okay, so we have right. a food full of table. Uh, food full of table. <laughs> table, table full of. See, I'm getting hungry now. So full of food. We have a table full of food. Yeah. Right. So you're going to be going through well, with us what you think is. Well, the, the idea is that really, um, for a lot of people, we're all on the go, aren't we? Mm-hmm. So quite often, breakfast is very much a rush job. It's we don't think it through. We maybe perhaps go to something at the station when yeah. we're waiting for the train and we think, oh, I'll quickly grab something without, without really thinking about what are we eating? Is it nourishing me? Mm-hmm. And the other thing, particularly about breakfast, and we'll look at breakfast in particular, is that we are so hung up in this country about cereal, toast, carbs. Mm-hmm. And actually, when you look at a lot of the other countries, Scandinavian countries, Japanese and so on, they hardly eat any of that. We, really? don't, re- we don't really eat... Um, uh, what they eat at all. So they might, for example, have a platter of meats and fish, mm. maybe a bit of um, Scandinavian rye bread or whatever. Yeah. They certainly don't get so obsessed with all the sugary drinks and cereals that we mm. would be eating. So let me just show you some examples of things. Um, now, as a nutritionist, I don't really look at particularly calories, which I right. know a lot of dieting women would. What I'm looking at is the composition and the nutrients. So. A classic one that we may think is quite healthy, a bowl of cereal and potentially what's called a high fibre cereal. This, however, is totally carb. It's totally carbohydrate. There's very, very little protein in there. Mm-hmm. Apart from the milk. It looks quite... like something like that. <laughs> It'll have about three or four teaspoons of sugar equivalent really? in there. Yeah, without us adding. I mean, often you'll find people will have a bowl of cereal and then they'll add sugar on top as well. Oh, yeah. Oops. But this in itself will have about three <laughs> teaspoons of sugar. Oh, gosh. Um, there's very little protein. It's not so going to sustain you. So when you say, like, you. no added sugar, you immediately assume that it's, it's no, healthy. No, but absolutely. Yeah. No, and these will have added sugars. And also, it's very carbohydrate. Carbohydrate is sugar. Yeah. You know, the body mm-hmm. doesn't really care how, which form it's in. It's going to break it down very, very quickly, mm-hmm. which means that it releases blood glucose into our body, which means that um, our bodies have to produce insulin, that then is driving the sugar into our cells um, to be burnt for energy. If it's not, body will just say, do you know what? There's too mm. much sugar, I'm going to dump it as fat. Oh, so carbohydrates That's and good. sugar will make you fat. Yeah. Eating a, a bowl of um, you know, avocado or something, which a lot of dieters would say, oh, that's really calorific, actually will probably not have half as much effect on your blood oh, wow. sugar at I all. I love avocados, that's um, good. Very, very healthy, yeah. very nutritious, mm-hmm. got fat in there, which is very healthy, and will satiate you, it'll stop you from feeling hungry. Mm-hmm. A lot of people find, you know, after about an hour of eating a bowl of cereal... They're hungry. They're hungry. <laughs> it's not sustaining <laughs> their ten energy. Try minutes me. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I remember as a child having sort of, you know, those rice pop type things. I'd be starving yeah, again. It's not satiating you at all. Equally, a uh, classic one from the local um, coffee shop. Mm. These will have around about three to 400 calories and around about five teaspoons of sugar in there. Oh, gosh, that's a that's lot. Awful. And again, saturated hydrogenated fats, mm. high in carbs, no protein, not going to do anything in terms of nourishing your body at all. Mm-hmm. Again, you're going to feel quite hungry afterwards. Add to that 
around about 100 and 150 calories, but equally another three to four tablespoons equivalent of sugar because of the carbs and the fructose. Mm -hmm. High fructose will like weigh... Even pure, even pure juice? Yeah, it's got fructose in. Mm. It's fr it might be fruit juice and therefore potentially you think that's healthy. It's not because it's been pasteurized. It's very low in vitamins and minerals and high in carbohydrates, so it's going to raise up your blood sugar again. I'm really again. surprised about that one. Yeah. I mean, I suspected about the, the croissant, but, and yeah. but the bran flakes. Yeah, and the but no, it's I'm one of those surprised. things that people think is going to be healthy, yeah. but actually isn't going to keep your blood sugar stable. What we want is stable blood sugar through the day, mm. so we don't get those ups and downs which trigger our appetite yeah. and create more hunger. Now, a lot of these yogurts, this is one of the problems with dieting. We get so obsessed with low fat. So we go low fat, high sugar. Mm. Um, now this in itself um, will have about three teaspoons of sugar in. And you know, often we'll give this to a child as well. That's quite a lot of sugar for yeah. a small child to have. Low fat. They're wondering why they're tearing around the house. <laughs> Absolutely, and it's not sustaining you. It's not going to keep you satiated. Mm. Um, so we're sort of, we're sort of, depriving ourselves really and then making ourselves feel hungry again now a classic coffee shop 11 o'clock thing i had a, a couple of clients and they actually moved um to this country from somewhere else couldn't understand why they started putting on weight and we looked at their diet and what it was was they were going from their office around about 11 o'clock and then again about three o'clock in the afternoon to have their cappuccino mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and their muffin. Oh, now, a muffin like this, this is a blueberry muffin. Mm -hmm. Now, just because it's got blueberries doesn't <laughs> mean <laughs> you're gonna get your five a day or your <laughs> antioxidants. This actually has about 500 <gasps> calories. Seriously? Five it's so small though. Hundred like a calories meal. and around about seven teaspoons <gasps> of sugar. That's awful. I mean, that's incredible, isn't it? But it tastes so good, Christine. I know, but you ma imagine a very small toddler. You often see, you know, women giving their, and it's not just women, giving their child a muffin like this. Oh, yeah. And then they wonder why they don't want their lunch. Well, if they've just <laughs> eaten 500 calories, I'm not surprised. So, and again, full of sugar, mm. you know, it's not going to do anything nutritionally for you at all. Um, now, that has to be healthy, right? Well, what do you think? Well, the, the chicken's definitely healthy because that's, pro I think that's chicken. <laughs> looks a bit yes, anemic. yes, it is. A little bit of chicken there. <laughs> and the salad there? stuff. Mm -hmm. I guess the dressing isn't yeah. so, so I great. Mean, in terms of looking at some of the others, at least here, what we've got is some protein yeah. with the chicken. Mm -hmm. um, we've also got um, some salad. And what you want when you're looking at making up a salad yourself is a nice selection of colour. Right. So what we want is we don't just want green. We want colour, we want reds, we want oranges, we want to see some beetroot maybe on there. We might want to see um, things like sugar snap peas and so on. So we mm. want a nice selection. So at least that's got variety. The trouble is a lot of short shop-bought um, salads will be heavy in the dressings and often right. hydrogenated fats. Um, and particularly the mayos. So that can sort of be a little bit of a downfall. However, if you just literally drizzled over some balsamic vinegar or olive oil mm. or flaxseed oil, which would have the omega-3s in, that would make it a lot healthier. Yeah, I love olive oil so, and balsamic vinegar. So well, absolutely, I use, yeah, and it's yeah. just so quick and easy to do, isn't mm -hmm. it? So it's not as if it's something that will complicate things. However, a lot of people will tend to go more for this option. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, because it's, you know, quick from the There's local cafe. There's a bit of green something in there. There's a bit of green, so therefore it must be okay. <laughs> um, but actually, you know, sandwiches in themselves pretty much are quite carb-dominated. Right. Often you get very little protein in that. It's very high carbs. Um, also, a lot of people, of course, are gluten-sensitive, so the sandwich option for a lot of people ends up them feeling very bloated mm. and heavy afterwards. Um, and of course, you know, um, salty meats um, with then a, another load of mayo I can see yeah, on yeah. there as well. It's going, to in, nice it's going to increase <laughs> the <laughs> salt and it's going to increase um, <laughs> sugar in mayonnaise as well as saturated fats, of course, as well. So again, may not sustain your energy for very mm. long either. There's not much nourishing. I'd much rather have a, you know, a load of um, avocado, like we were saying, yeah, and, yeah. and some chicken or something instead. Um, 
don't really need to say <laughs> much more about some of these sort of bars, but these will have around about 300 calories and around yeah. about 30 grams of um, carbohydrates and mm. sugar. So you're looking at another, you know, five teaspoons of sugar in there as well. What about diet it's, drinks? Though? So diet drinks, a lot of people think that that is their way to lose weight. Unfortunately, particularly caffeinated drinks are going to be causing blood sugar um, destabilization. When you um, eat caffeine or drink caffeine, what you'll find is that that can trigger cortisol, which is our stress hormone. Mm -hmm. And that in itself can um, destabilize our blood sugar levels. And if you get excess blood glucose um, through the caffeine, mm -hmm. then, and if you're not burning that, so you're not going off with Jane or, or for a run, then the excess will be dumped as fat. Oh, but the other thing about See, never, diet, no, that, but you? the other thing about diet drinks is that they can stimulate sweet taste receptors in our mouth, which then makes us want to crave more sugary foods. So we don't end up feeling satiated at all. Christine, tell us so, some ideal things that we so should yeah, do for so breakfast, let's, let's think for of lunch, some, what yeah, do you think? So absolutely. So I would say refocus on protein foods. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? Eggs. Eggs are so quick and easy. A scrambled egg, a boiled egg, omelette, anything like, like that. Sometimes I like uh, scrambled eggs. I drizzle a bit of olive oil and oh, natural lovely. yogurt. Lovely. Lovely. That Absolutely. Oh, That's perfect. Yeah. So, um, other people, what they'll do is okay, they might like a bit of fruit. Use a whole piece of fruit yeah. and make a protein shake. Mm. And it doesn't mean you have to go out and buy all these protein powders. You can Just make, make it up. Yeah, Absolutely. So make it up with some yogurt, some milk, or a milk alternative if you're dairy sensitive. Maybe add a little bit of flax seed or some mm -hmm. nuts in there you've got a quick and easy blender you know you've got to rush out that's protein that's going to stabilize you mm -hmm. so um, forget the sort of high carby type approaches look for something that's just as easy to make yeah um, but has more protein that's going to fill you up that's going to okay. make you um, have a more of a stable blood sugar level and you'll then be able to keep going much longer. What about when you're on the go and you want someone mm. to grab something for lunch? So, what so you, that's a really advice? good. So a lot of supermarkets now will do either what we call those bento boxes, where you have a little bit of salad, you might have a bit of tuna, mm -hmm. you might have, you know, you might have a little bit of potato in there, but it's a lot more focused on vegetables, salad, and some protein and that's your nice. focus and you can pick those up now in all the supermarkets and all the cafes so it's not difficult in winter why not go for a warming sort of soup with beans or lentils or yeah. something in there again that's giving you protein and fiber again will fill you up mm -hmm. so it's not that you have to always remember to bring something with you a lot of these cafes and supermarkets now do provide it's things about time isn't it because it is like, because, because, it because it was just busy, sandwiches like, before yeah, wasn't it true. yeah yeah and now it's the focus has changed it is mm. a lot easier um, and there's lots more options as well if you do have say a dairy sensitivity or you have a gluten sensitivity mm. and that's very common these days you know you can't a lot of people cannot just go in and get a sandwich that'll okay, make them feel yeah. really sick okay. um, so there are those options and there now are um, healthier alternatives to those sort of treats those bars you know there's like one christine's mac and fresh yes absolutely I love it. I love it. Oh, fantastic <laughs> And you know, <laughs> and we can always send you some more over. But there are what, there are ones that you can buy on the high street that yeah. are a mixture of nuts and seeds mm -hmm. and dried fruit. Right. You know, so and they're great. Children love them as well because obviously, yeah. you know, lunch boxes and so on is often sometimes difficult as well. So there are okay. healthier options which will keep you much more you energized. And it doesn't have to be boring. Like there's such no. lovely food that you can eat and that like, still be healthy. Yes. We've run out of time, unfortunately. Oh. Christine, thank you so much for those words of wisdom for us. Brilliant. And I do hope that's helped our viewers at home it's certainly helped me I hope it's helped you to you know get healthier and and not think that eating healthily is boring because it certainly mm -hmm. isn't but as with you know anything that you really want to achieve in life losing weight it doesn't really come easy you have to you know put in a certain level of sacrifice and you will achieve it and you know please do have a healthy Christmas <laughs> you can start from now Absolutely. you don't have to pick up we're gonna so I think most people pig out a little bit on Christmas yeah, day but do. just a little bit but don't overdo it but we're gonna we'll talk more about yes, that until, we will. until we get to Christmas time so thank you so much for watching and we'll be back again on the next Chrissy B show bye for now. Thank you.